What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we're going to be looking at the final combiner in the Transformers trading card game. Now, the good news is, I don't think this will be the final combiner forever, but in Rise of the Combiners, we've currently seen five combiners. Links to all of them in the description. We were told that there were going to be six combiners. And given that I'm showing you combiner number six today, that means that... This is the last combiner, which is very sad. It's also a very weird combiner, so let's have a look, shall we? It was revealed by the lovely folks over at Ozformer, so do make sure you go and check them out. And it is a two-character, 16-star combiner. I know, right? Which means you can play other Transformers, which has not happened before. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about Dreadwing. This is a very weird character. All the other combiners have been five characters like Volcanicus or six characters like Optimus Maximus. And they've all been a deck in and of themselves. This is just 16 stars, nine left over. You can play other characters here. So, let's have a look, shall we? Starting off, we're having a look at Dreadwing. That is the combined character. It is a ranged character, and it is a plane. More on those in a moment. It is a 16-star character, which means 16 over the two that make it up, meaning you've got nine other stars to play with, which, as I've said, that is very unusual. And it's got 24 health. And it's, it's kind of weird how you think about the health here. Because on the one hand, 24 health is very high. When you compare it to other characters like Autobot Cosmos, who's up there with 21. But it's extremely low when you compare it to other combiners. I mean, we could look at something like Menasaur, for instance. And Menasaur sitting there with 35 health as the weakest transformer combiner we've seen so far so that is a little bit weird it, it's hard to it's hard to judge to be honest with you ladies and gentlemen it's very hard to judge this combiner it's got an attack of seven which is high and certainly when you look at the other combiners it's only optimus maximus which can beat it with nine so that is a very high attack and an offensive two is honestly basically standard for the combiners it's all right. So the stats are good, but they're not stunning. Now, being a combiner, when you combine it, you take all the damage, everything over. But it has two weapon slots, two armor slots, and two utility slots. Which is a fancy way of saying you get to keep all the upgrades from the two characters that you combine. Which is nice. And there are some fun things you can pull off with two weapon slots, two armor slots, and two utility slots. Now, obviously, the one I'm going to jump straight away is the same one everyone always jumps to. Two grenade launchers! And yeah, you can put two grenade launchers on. And that can give you an extra eight attack. Only for one attack, mind you. But still, that's an awful lot. But it just brings up options. I am a big, 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 big fan of Armed Hovercraft, which, given that this is a ranged character you can put on, plus one attack. When you attach it to a ranged character, you do one damage to each enemy. And that's very, very nice. But then you've used up your weapon slot. Well, here, you haven't used up your weapon slot. You can play another weapon. It means that you can play a force field and another force field now the ruling here is i need to get a, a little bit of clarity on this one it's whether you can have both of them on and then only one drops off or whether both drop off i'm assuming you could stash two force field on here and then you would essentially resist two attacks we will need some clarification here i cannot think off the top of my head of any transformer that's actually got two armor slots at the moment we know that we've got megatron living weapon that's got three weapon slots i can't think of any that have got two armor slots so we'll have to wait for a ruling on that so this isn't a stunning skill i mean again let's have another look at menasaur here menasaur has got bold one tough one and pierce one and you may play an extra action every turn that's a fairly phenomenal set of skills 
way better than you can have an extra of each upgrade. But actually, an extra of each upgrade, not too bad. It's not amazing, but it's not too bad. Now, we do have two Transformers from which we combine. And let's start off with Blackwing. Because you may have noticed I've not told you about an Enigma card yet. Unless it's being hidden from me, we don't have an Enigma card. But don't worry, there will be an explanation. So, let's get back to it, shall we? Blackwing. So, health of 12, not bad. It's an 8-cost character, which is average. Health of 12 is average. Attack of 5 is slightly higher than average. Defense of 0 or 1 is lower than average. As an attacker, it's quite nice. Not a bad attacker at all. And then we have the skill. At the end of your turn, if you have Dreadwing Air Defense in bot mode on the battlefield or in your KO area, you may scrap three cards from your hand. If you do, combine Dreadwing and Blackwing into Dreadwing Sky Destroyer. Cool. So we're not using an Enigma card to combine. Now, I'm in two minds about this. Because on the one hand, I love not having to play an Enigma card. Because here's the thing, right? It, let's say you're playing Volcanicus, you've got to play free Dinobot Enigma. If you're not playing free Dinobot Enigma, the chances are that you're just not going to be able to get it working very often. Well, that's three cards in your deck, and there's no blue pip to help you defend, there's no orange pip to help you attack. And when you've combined, you get bold two, which is great. But until you've combined, it's basically a useless card, which is used to combine. It's three cards in your deck, which are there to combine. But other than that, they're kind of clogging up your deck. Not having to play it is great. But having to discard three cards from your hand to combine, bearing in mind you start the game with three cards in hand, and you draw one per turn, this is not traditionally a game where you have huge hand sizes. And that could end up being a little bit of an issue here. Because if you don't have the cards in hand, you can't combine. And you may well have the cards, but you just don't want to discard them. Now, of course, you can always play a bunch of draw power here. I mean, one of the ones that really jumps out to me is Equipment Enthusiast. Because clearly here, you are going to want to try and take advantage of upgrades. Because you've got two upgrade slots on your combiner. So you're probably going to want to play a couple of extra upgrades, and that Equipment Enthusiast lets you draw a card for each of your upgrades. So that could work, and that might be what it takes here. Love combining without an Enigma card, because you don't have to draw into it. That's the other thing. I'm probably sleeping on the lead story here, burying the lead, as it were. You don't have to draw into it or flip it while you're attacking or defending and then discard a card from your hand to put it into your hand using the green pip. You can just always use this. And you can do this very quickly because, of course, rapid conversion. You need to flip two bots in order to combine. Well, you can flip one for your turn, use rapid conversion as your action for the turn, and you're rolling. Now, that's a little bit dicey because, essentially, you start the game with three cards, draw one for your turn. If you've got rapid conversion, you play it, and that's the only card you can play because you'll then need to discard the other three. But with rapid conversion, in theory... You could combine this at the end of your first turn. And it is at the end of your turn. That is after you've done all your attacking, etc, etc. So you are not combined then until the end of your turn. But then your next turn you start combined. Love not having to play the Enigma card. Love not having to find the Enigma card. Love that it's a fast combination compared to the others. Don't know how much I love discarding free cards from your hand. Now, if we flick over to Dreadwind here, this is your defender. So, we've got 12 health and an 8 cost, like before. The attack is poor at 2, but it's a defender. 3 defense is good, 2 defense is alright. This is a defender. And clearly, in bot mode, we've got the same, or I suppose, the equivalent skill. At the end of your turn, if you have Blackwing Aerial Attacker in bot mode on the battlefield or in your KO area, you may scrap 3 cards from your hand and combine them. Cool. We kind of expected that. But we also have an alt mode skill here. PS2. Guaranteeing that you do two damage when attacking. And remember, PS2 
cannot exceed your attack. So let's say for argument's sake you put a piercing blaster on here, you would then have a pierce of 5, but only an attack of 2. You would need to up your attack, or else you would still only do 2 damage, because your pierce cannot outpace your attack. It's a nice little bonus. And it's... I'm going to be honest with you, it's just plain better. It is better than Blackwing. Because you've got the same health, higher defense, and even though you've got lower attack, you've got Pierce too. So clearly, I, I like Dreadwind, and I like Dreadwind in alt mode. I'm not a huge fan of Blackwing, if I'm honest with you, but it's there for the combining. It's a very hard combiner to judge. Because we don't have any comparison. We've got five and six character combiners, and we can look at them all together and see what we think. But Dreadwing is the only two character combiner. So clearly the stats are a fair bit below the five character combiners, and clearly a fair bit above your standard one single character. I don't know how good they are. I think it's very nice, and I think it's worth playing around with. I'm not loving the skill. I don't mind having two of every upgrade, and there's certainly a lot of options, far more than we can get into in this video, but I don't think it's phenomenal. Whereas when I look at Menasaur, I'm like, bold and tough and pierce and an extra action, I do count that as a phenomenal, and I suppose set of skills is the only way to put it. Now, you are a ranged character. I've already mentioned armed hovercraft. I should also mention that we have rapid ascent here, which is an armor, Gives you plus one defense, and your opponent has to scrap a card from their hand when you play it. It's fine. You're also a ranged character, by which I mean all of these three are ranged characters, no matter which mode they're in. You are going full ranged. And in terms of planes, all three of these are planes, although obviously not in bot mode, that would be silly. Robots aren't aeroplanes. They can turn into aeroplanes, but before that, they are not aeroplanes. And in terms of planes here, we do have access to Aerial Recon. When you attack or defend, look at the top card of your deck, you may scrap it. And it means that you can try and make sure that you're drawing into a blue icon if you're defending, or an orange icon if you are attacking. Helps up the odds if nothing else. And then, of course, we do have the action card bombing run. Choose an enemy character and move one damage counter from each of your planes to that enemy. It's alright. I mean, it's not great when you're putting 16 stars into one character. And although we have a bunch of 5 cost planes, let's say uh, Air Raid, for instance, we unfortunately don't have any 4 cost planes at the moment. Which is kind of sad. So you're not going to be making a 4 wide planes deck here. You can't win them all, ladies and gentlemen. This is a very interesting character that is extremely difficult to judge because it is the only two-character combiner we've got. But we've clearly got some decent attack on one character and some decent defense and pierce on the other character. And the fact of the matter is, when you combine, you've got good stats and you can have two of each type of upgrade. That has got to be worth having a play with. So ladies and gentlemen, I would very much like to know at this stage what you think about this. So please do let me know in the comment section. Go nuts! But please do remember the most important rule. Be nice, would ya? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, where we talk Transformers and other games. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wossy Plays.